fastening your building materials together, it's always good practice to pre-drill your holes before you assemble with the screws. I like to add a little block underneath, that way when I drill through, I'm not going to hit the concrete with my drill. For this assembly, we'll be using two three inch number eight fasteners. So screw pre-drill about one inch in from each end. Once you're done pre-drilling your holes, you can go ahead and assemble your pieces together using the three inch number eight wood screws. Next, we're going to fasten our two side pieces together with a four inch mending plate. Center the mending plate over top of the two pieces and attach using the three quarter inch by number six screws. These will not need to be pre-drilled. On the side that has the ramp, we're going to want to put our mending plate down in the center between the two boards because we have another piece that is going to eventually sit up on top. Once you've constructed the outside frame, you can go ahead and install the forest area. I'd like to use some three inch screws for this. You can put a couple of them through the back side. As well, we have this small partition that gets installed next to the forest area. For this, we're gonna pre-drill a couple of holes and then set our three inch screws. Our piece for the center, labeled D, it's measured in from the forest area. If you hook it on the side two by six, it gets measured in 72 and one eighth of an inch in. Once we have piece D installed, we can go ahead and start the assembly of the river area. To do this, we're going to need pieces O, P, Q, and S. You can start by assembling piece O and piece P. To do this, we will assemble piece O onto the back side, sorry, onto the front of piece P. It would be good to get a helper for this to hold it together or use a set of clamps. When fastening these together, it's a good idea to pre-drill again. This is going to help you from 
causing a split in the wood when you drill the screw in. I suggest using three or four screws down the back side of this piece to hold the angle piece in place. Now we're going to attach piece Q and piece S to piece P. To do this, we're going to use a two inch mending plate that will be placed on the top side of panel P and of panel S. So I would install those prior to installing piece Q. These will be installed with the number six by three quarter inch wood screws. I'm resting piece S up here just so that it holds it in place. Piece Q can then be assembled onto piece S before standing the entire unit in place. Once you're complete, you can take the whole assembly and slide it back into place against the 2x6 labeled D. Once it's in place, you can fasten it to piece D using the inch and a quarter by number eight wood screw. For the river piece, it has been fully assembled for your convenience. Even the side brackets have been assembled so that when you lay it down, it will fall at a 45 degree angle. Just try to line up the marks on the sides and you'll have the correct angle. Now this may be a tip for you guys if you have an issue with getting these to fit. The measurements are quite tight. So what you may have to do, as I've done here, is disassemble the top brackets and then wedge the river piece in. Once you've got your river piece installed, you can put everything back together. We'll fasten the river piece in place through the front side of the plywood using our three inch wood screws.
The next part of our assembly is installing the 2x6 labeled C. It's 96 inches long and gets installed next to the ramp and against the angled plywood labeled O. To install this, just keep it flush with that piece of plywood and from the plywood side, install some inch and a quarter by number eight screws. Once you've screwed the plywood into piece C, you can screw through the two by six into its adjacent piece with some three inch number eight screws. Once that's completed, it's time to install the completed ramp assembly. To do this, you'll insert it between the two side pieces and you'll line up the front of the ramp with the adjacent 2x6 piece. This will give you the proper spacing. You can fasten it together using the 3 inch wood screws. Don't forget to add some screws to the opposite side as well. These can be fastened right through the sheathing. Our next step in the ramp build is to install this side piece. The side piece gets installed evenly on both sides of the joint. To do that, we find center of the side piece, mark it, and align it in the center of our joint. To install this, we have a couple of 90 degree angle brackets. One of them is going to be installed on either side of the piece and screwed in to both two by sixes. We will use the number six by three quarter inch screws to hold these in place. The last portion of the framing of this build is to assemble piece T against piece S. To do this, we place it on top of the 2x6 side piece and we just press it up against piece S. I suggest using some pre-drilled holes before installing the piece with the inch and a quarter number 8 wood screws. Finally, we're going to install a small angled bracket to the edge of piece T and screw it down into the 2x6. You might want to get your helper to come here and help you install it just in case there's a bit of a warp in the board. For our base construction for the cabin, it consists of two pieces. You'll notice that one piece has the hole drilled completely through it. The second piece is pre-drilled partway through the board. This is so that we can set our bolts into those holes, pound them into place, and it'll keep them set up nice and rigid. Once that's complete, you can take the top piece 
and install it over top of your bolts. Each build consists of 20 dowels. These dowels will be used in the forest area. There are 10 at 10 inches and 10 at 12 inches. These are a sample of how the dowels are constructed and I'll show you how to construct them. In order to assemble these, you're going to have to pre-drill some holes to install these eyelets. Failure to pre-drill these could cause the dowel to crack and split. I would start with a smaller drill bit first, measure to center, and drill through. Once that's completed, you can switch out to a larger drill bit. I would use a one quarter inch drill bit and use that as a pilot hole. Make sure that you're drilling deep enough so that the full depth of the eyelet can be installed into the dowel. To do this, you can take your eyelet and place it on the end of your drill bit and grab a piece of tape and mark it for depth. That way, once you've reached the bottom of your hole, you'll know exactly how deep to be. When installing the eyelet into the dowel, twist it in by hand. If it gets too tight, here's a good pro tip. Take your bolt and spin it. This will save you a lot of time. You want to spin it almost all the way down. Once your dowels are fully assembled, make sure to check them against your cabin base. The eyelets should freely move up and down on your bolts. If the eyelets are out or in too far, it won't allow them to move and it'll cost you time in the competition. Each court includes five light standards. So you'll have five pieces of ABS pipe, 10 test caps, five nuts, and five tennis balls. When we're constructing these, we take a test cap and we install it on both ends of our black pipe. When you do this, make sure that they stand up. We don't want them prematurely tipping over. Once that's completed, take a piece of the 3M tape that is supplied, install it on top of one of the test caps, peel back the top sticker and firmly press the nut into it. Once that's completed, the tennis ball sits directly on top of that. Once you've completed the assembly of all of your dowel pieces, you can place them into the forest area in a random order. Then you can move along and set up all of your light posts, your cabin base, and the foam pieces for the cabin roof. Just be sure to make sure that you use proper spacing as set out on your build specifications.